waterfront community in New York called Broad Channel is again struck by tragedy. Just a few weeks ago, this community was flooded out by a terrible storm. Now they have to deal with a violent fire. A man hears someone screaming late at night. He runs out of his home, intending to help the person in need. He immediately sees his neighbor's home is filled with smoke and flames. Seconds later, the fire leaps 10 feet across to another home next door. Running from house to house, yelling and pounding on doors, he desperately hopes he can get everyone out in time. Broad Channel's volunteer fire department arrives on scene. The first house that caught on fire is completely gutted. The second house was involved beyond recovery, and the third house was going to go at any moment. The ground is thick with mud and water from recent floods. The street is also dug up with new sewer lines under construction, making it more difficult for the men and heavy fire equipment to move. Time now also becomes their enemy. Just put it on the side for now, Mark. Put it on the side for the bed. Put it back for the bed. That's all you got here. That's all you got. That's all it is. That's all it is. Yeah, all right, I'll stop you here. Hey, what? The walls and ceilings are filled with hidden fires. The firefighters must quickly ventilate them before dangerous heat and gases cause explosions. Brave volunteer firefighters begin to search for survivors, a task that is both painful and heartbreaking, and seldom rewarding when conditions are like this. I heard somebody screaming, so I opened my bedroom window, and I heard, oh my God, oh my God. And my wife said to me, I think that's your sister. So I got dressed, I ran down, grabbed my fire extinguisher, because I seen some flames, and I ran down here, and somebody was yelling, someone's in the house, somebody's in the house. So I went over to the door, and I opened the door, and a big puff of smoke hit me in the face. So I got down on my knees, and I was going to crawl in. My wife was yelling at me, don't you run in there. So I was screaming, anybody in here, wake up, wake up. And all of a sudden, the flames just went, so I ran around, and I was looking for a hose to see if I could start squirting a hose, but the flames just started hitting the side of this other house. So I went, I ran to this house here, and I woke up all these people. I knocked on their doors to wake them up. Then I ran around a block to the house behind them, because I know them people, and I woke up all of them. By that time, the fire department had got here, and they started putting all their hoses, so I started helping them pull all the hoses onto the, to get the, uh, the water onto the house as fast as possible, because it was spreading, man. It was going up quick. But luckily, everybody got out. I don't know about, I think the one lady in the, the, where it started didn't get out, but everybody in these other houses all got out in time, which is good. The fire is upgraded to a two-alarm fire, and New York City Fire Company has called in for assistance. 25 more minutes of precious time goes by before they arrive. Volunteer and full-time paid firefighters soon work side by side. As the firefighters continue to battle all of the burning houses, more trouble becomes evident. Hydrants are running out of water and other lines are getting clogged with mud. Although the New York City engines have water on board, sewer line construction and narrow roads make it extremely difficult for them to get to the fire site. Hey, I'm Broad Channel. Is this your line up here? They shut us down. Hey, look, we got they want us to relay water out of this rig. Joe, come on. We got to get water into this rig. Since it came to the firehouse, where is that over there? Now working feverishly, they find ways to get more water to the fire, saving the entire neighborhood before it goes up in flames. Okay, I'm back in the mouth because said he's losing it now. 285 is real, going to relay to... Uh, okay, we got a company helping They're coming the in now, yeah. Right. Yeah. 4-7 to 285. 2 6 has a, has a line at the firehouse. Yeah. I think that's around the corner. Around the corner? Can you, get, can you feed this guy real fast? They're running out of water here. Okay. They're sucking mud in. 
Both the volunteer and the paid fire departments diligently worked together getting the fires under control. What was suspected prior to their arrival now is confirmed. During their primary search for victims, they discover a 75-year-old disabled woman who has succumbed to the fire. Orders are given to begin a secondary search. This closely knit community came to each other's rescue and support. We learned that it was a young man who initially ran to the firehouse to alert them that their neighborhood was going up in flames. Can you help uh, 266? Who's, who's getting along again? All right, where'd he go? Right here, he's soaking mud. Before he runs out of water. As you can see, it uh, started approximately about 4 o'clock in the morning. We have a uh, recovered one body already. I believe it's the landlady. She was dead inside the first floor. We got her very quickly. We have experience in water problems. However, we are making progress. Uh, if I am two buildings, it's still doubtful due to our water problem, but we are making progress. We have had a primary search in both buildings. Other than the victim, it's negative. We're still conducting a secondary search, uh, so to make sure we don't have anybody else. All right, 10 four. I'm up on the second floor right now. You want me to go down to the first floor? Yeah, one three. I did receive. Do you want me to go down? I'm up on the second floor right now. You want me to go down to the first floor? I said the Uh, me and my mother was sitting on the couch, and uh, I heard somebody screaming. And I didn't know what happened, so I looked through the window, and uh, I saw like a flame coming through the the room over there. So um, we opened the door, and I ran down to the firehouse while my mother came out here. And I just got the people out of the fire department, and they, you know, they came down as fast as they could. They were the first ones down here, but out of the the second room on the right, on the house, you're shooting out the the window. It's just shooting right out the window, pretty far, you know, out the window. And uh, I went to the firehouse, so when I got there, I came back, and both houses were up. The first house was up, and this part of the second house went up in flames. We got a, a field calm game, but we got a second one. Well, due to the fire condition, yeah. uh, uh, there's nothing we can do. All right. Uh, we're all set. They set up the board. All right. Division 1 3 to Battalion 5 1. Yeah, Joe, uh, when you can, let's get a real good search in both floors of this building. Uh, we had a report of only one 1045 person living in the building. Uh, that's why I'm surprised we get the second one in the rear. But uh, we'll get a real good search before we give the secondary, all right? We got a second victim found in the rear. The second victim is the nephew of the elderly woman who also dies in the fire. We got the second dude truck. We'll first do the relief truck. will relieve the first dude truck, okay? Okay. And if you want, we, we can sh uh, shift that truck company in the rear. 142 the into the fire. Yeah, building. if they need uh, relief. Okay. okay. Well, we're going in there. I anyway. just want to take a look at these victims, okay? Okay. Let me hold you. The battalion chief relieves firefighters who have been working without a break since the initial call. Exhausted volunteer and paid firefighters express their camaraderie, some without words. My uh, sister-in-law, her husband, and their newborn baby lived upstairs, and thank God they got out. Uh, two people died on the first floor. They heard the smoke alarms, uh, aroused them from their sleep, and they were able to get out in just in time. Fire was uh, venting as they left. I know it's my block. I have four children. The oldest is just six, so sweating bullets coming down here. With the fire extinguished, firefighters begin cleanup operations while gathering up hose lines and ladders. We're in the process of wrapping up the fire. We have had two victims succumb to uh, one to heavy burns, the other to asphyxiation. And uh, we'll continue to operate for. Uh, approximately a half hour to an hour longer. But uh, we did the best we could, and uh, we feel good about uh, 
extinguishing the fire without it exposing the other buildings. But uh, in this particular case, uh, I feel both uh, victims were dead prior to our arrival. So we did the best we can and uh, we're glad about that. The firefighters know that they've done everything humanly possible to put the fires out, but sometimes, sometimes it is just not possible to save everyone. Death is a very real part of every firefighter's life. We'll be back.